to add comedy to a situation, whether it's a miscommunication, whether there's a late reaction, or there could even be something that's redirected. Some years ago, there was a show called Riptide, and in the opening of the show, they had one of the funniest scenes, and I remember this to this day. They had a guy sitting in a car, he was sitting in a convertible, and he had his, his head turned backwards and his arm over the other seat like he was bagging up. So everybody thought, he just thought he was going in reverse. But when he pulls off, he goes forward. <laughs> That's what a thing comedy does. It redirects you, it sets you up for one thing, but, I, but in, it gets you to look at something else. Now one of the things about using comedy, <coughs> you can't take yourself too seriously. I want you to look at the person on your right and your left and say, don't take yourself so seriously. Don't take yourself so seriously. Because no one else does. <laughs> I'm serious. I know a lot of us in here are successful, we're powerful, we've been able to accomplish a lot of things. But if you're really going to be good at adding comedy to your presentation, you cannot take yourself too seriously. Because quite frankly, no one else does. There are three things that I want to talk about when it comes to adding comedy to your presentation. Number one is the right timing. Comedy has a timing. But number two, there's a relevant tone. You have to know the artist that you're speaking to and what you're trying to communicate. And number three, it has to be a relatable topic. So number one, the right timing. Number two, a relevant tone. And number three, a relatable topic. Now, in comedy, comedy has to be delivered with perfect timing in order for it to be impactful. Have you ever seen a comedian that didn't quite have the timing just right? And it took away from the presentation. And one of the things with all of these speaking styles, in order for you to master them, you're going to have to practice them. You know, that's why I really like the fact that this is black belt speakers. Because even with the martial arts, you learn the techniques. And, but once you master these techniques, you can use them anytime. How many of you, by a show of hands, if I can remember the, the Karate Kid? The original one. I ain't talking about the, this is what they had later. But, but the original one. It was so funny how he had him doing all these chores around his house. Yeah, wax on, wax off, paint the fence. Little did he know that in doing those over and over again, he was actually doing what they call muscle memory. He was kind of programming his body on doing it. Well, after a while, he got tired of doing all those chores because he was waiting to be trained in martial arts. And when he approached Mr. Miyagi and he was fussing and he just kind of ran up at him and Mr. Miyagi just threw a punch and told him to wax and, and he was able to block it. But that's because he learned the <coughs> techniques. So in your in added comments to your presentation, one of the things you definitely want to do is you want to work on your timing to make it more impactful. Like the punch, a punchline given too soon or too late can kill the effectiveness of the comedy. Think of things that make you laugh, movies, plays, comedians, and watch them as often as you can. There's a thing they call a game reel, where most teams, what they do, they actually look at not only their competition, but they look at themselves. They see where they're strong and where they're weak at. And one of the things I was sharing with uh, somebody was how important it is that in order for you to be confident in what you're doing, consistency builds confidence. Consistency. How many of you would believe that I had a stuttering problem as a child? Anybody? Well, I did. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I did. I had a problem speaking. I had a problem getting my words out, but I knew that what I had to share was so important that I couldn't let that stop me. So what I had to do was I had to not only acknowledge the problem, then I had to address the problem, but even when that didn't help, I had to attack the problem. 
And so even in the stuff that you're doing, even in your speaking, and I'm just talking about one speaking style, but whatever your style is, you're going to have to practice. I would not be up here today had I not made it a point, had I not committed myself to putting in the work and just doing those three to five minute weekly videos. I found myself learning so much about myself. I was telling Wolverton, I was telling him earlier that watching myself on a video, I noticed that I would flare my arms out. I never really picked that up at before. But my point is that in practicing and doing it over and over again, I saw the camera was unbiased. Everything that I did, there are some people that unconsciously, they, they brush their hair. Unconsciously, they may pull on their ear. But when you see yourself on tape, when you are consistent in doing it, what will happen is you will start to realize stuff that you overlook and stuff that you miss. But even in your, even in your, even in that common, it's practicing. Even if it's in front of the mirror, it helps you to get better at what you're doing. So think of things. <clears throat> okay, right. There are podcasts that showcase comedians even having funny stories. And you can even find comedy in the stuff that you see. You know how, in fact, Dr. West tells us that the best speakers are the best listeners. Then we have to take time to look at the comedy that's around us. I flew in yesterday from Mobile, Alabama. Yes, I said Mobile. <laughs> and the funny story behind that is, and I'm going to take a little side note, was that when I was in college, I went to college in Atlanta, Georgia. And there was a guy that came up to me and said, hey, man, do you know Greg? I, I said, Greg who? He said, I don't know, but, he, but he's from Alabama, too. <laughs> and I'm like, man, that's a whole state. You have no last name. So what, are we just all standing around in the big mud pot up with straws in our mouth? What do you mean? He just said, he's from Alabama, too. So that's one of the reasons why I emphasize where I'm from. In Mobile, but I flew up from Mobile yesterday, and uh, thankfully I was big balling in ecstasy because as you can tell, I'm tall, and so I need as much leg room as I can get. And we were on a plane that actually had five seats across, and they had to actually go and talk to each person and get them to verbally say, "Are you willing to follow the instructions and help somebody out just in case we have to go down?" And the first woman they asked, she said. Uh, yeah. And I think mean, it, was, it was so loud and loud. I'm like, are you really? I said, no, we need to change her out. She needs to move. Because she was not convincing to me. I'm like, I would not put my life in her hands. But my point is, that situation, it was a real situation, but I saw the comedy in it. And being able to actually identify. There are some stories that are just funny. But then there are other stories that have humor in them, and as a speaker, you have to look at ways to bring that out. I had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to speak on the CEO Morning Show, and I shared how I used to study as a child. And one of the things that they did, they had me to actually go to a speech therapy class. Now, the only thing I hated about going to speech therapy, the only thing I really hated about that was that I would have to go to social studies first, I would have to sit, they would have to call the roll, and then they would send someone to get me. Now, that wasn't the worst part. Because after they come to those years, I'm here for Sakoni Prince. All my play, I mean, this is in middle school. So you can imagine just how, how cruel and how mean. And this was, this was so many years ago, like I say I mean. But so many years ago to the point to where, you know, there wasn't a real anti-bullying campaign going on. So whenever I got up, like whenever I would gather my stuff, kids would be like, b -b 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 <laughs> Now, as a child, for me, that was traumatized. Because I'm already having a hard time speaking. Anyway. And yet, there they are. They are teasing. Now, I can look back at that now and I can laugh. But at the time, it was traumatized. But my point is that even seeing the comedy in that now, even being able to talk about that, even while we were at lunch, we talked about 
being able to talk about stuff that you are no longer in. It's hard for you to talk about being in prison if you were still there. It's hard for you to talk about being in a situation that you still haven't come out of. But once you come out of it, then you can talk about it. And it may be something that is heavy. It may be a traumatic experience. But again, even being able to find a comedy in it, even being able to lighten the load, because otherwise, everybody leaves depressed. Everybody leaves with their heart aching. Everybody leaves just wanting to give you a hug. If you could add comedy, there was one comedian, he talked about how he was driving on a bus with several other of his church members. And the driver, for some reason, fell asleep. Thankfully, they were on a road that had rails. And what happened was the van started to careen against the rails. And everybody kind of woke up. They were like, what's going on? What's... And then they started yelling and screaming, and he woke up. But then he grabbed the steering wheel, and he started swerving. The <laughs> and the guy said, we should have just let him stay asleep. <laughs> now, that was a dangerous situation. But again, he was able to point out and find the comedy. And so in your presentation, being able and knowing when to put that in your presentation is so critical. Because if you don't, you're going to have people going on that roller coaster again, you'll just go down too far. So you have to be able to time it and have that, that work in your advantage. The relevant tone. When we consider adding comedy to your presentation, it has to be something that matches the audience that you're talking to. Stuff that's funny to a five-year-old may have no reference to a 50-year-old. Stuff that's funny to a 20-year-old may have no reference to a 40-year-old. So you have to be able to strike a relevant tone with your audience. Comedy should be appropriate for the audience and the environment. You want to lose your audience by telling them something that should be shared among close friends. You want to make sure that you don't make the audience feel uncomfortable while giving your presentation. And do I need to point back to what my brother over here did? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, okay, you would win. But see, a prime example. So we but 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 we have to learn from that. There are certain times that we can add certain comedic elements to our presentation, but we got to consider our audience, who we're talking to. And even, even in the point of funny stories, like Les, like Les Brown tells as well as Ruben that you never tell a point without making a story. You never make a point without telling a story, and never tell a story without making a point. And even with, even with stories that are comical in nature. And so knowing how and how and when to add those is so critical because that's going to make the difference as to whether or not people truly get the point. And so that's a huge part of what needs to be done in your presentation. Now, we are looking at how can we bridge that gap between people I use the term like because so many people tend to, you know, tend to use that as a, as a, I don't say a crutch, but as something to hold against you. But one of the things I learned is that if people like you, they'll listen to you. If people like you, they'll listen to you. If people trust you, they'll do business with you. But then, if people love you, you hardly even have to ask. Because they'll be ready, willing, and able to do whatever. Adding comedy to your presentation will help you to reach that first thing. Be likable. And once you're likable, people will listen to you. 
They will listen to what you have to say. They will consider you as someone. How many of you have ever, by a show of hands, had someone rub you the wrong way? Okay? And they don't care what they had to say, what they were selling. At that point in time, it's like, forget it. They don't know, but you already checked out. You're just waiting for a chance for you to leave. You're looking for that opportunity for you to just step away. And so even from your presentation, even in your presentation, one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to put yourself in a position to where you are not viewed as a trusted source and you are not liked. And like I said, comedy helps in that. It helps add that to your presentation. Now, the third thing that I wanted to point out was your presentation has to be related. It has to be related. People have to be able to either have gone through the situation or they have to be able to imagine the situation. And I believe that this is the most important of the three. And I don't care how funny you think you are or your story is, if the audience can't relate to it, it doesn't do any good. Talking to 10-year-olds about retirement woes <laughs> will never get you the response that you want. Because they don't even, I mean, they have no point of reference. They have no point of reference. And talking to college students about, about how did, did, did this. My point is that in order for you to be able to, in order for you to be able to actually have an impact, you have to have a relatable topic. Several years ago, there was a commercial by American Express, and it had in it Jerry Seinfeld. And the commercial, now you, you only have 30 seconds, 30 seconds to, to communicate your information. And it started off with him doing a comedy show. He was in Britain. He was standing on the stage, and he was talking, he was telling his joke, and he delivered the punchline, and nobody said anything. There was no reaction. He bombed. So what he did was, in the rest of that 30 seconds or that 25 seconds, he spent using his American Express card going around Britain. He was taking cabs. He was going to coffee shops. He was going to clubs. He was playing crickets. So he had a chance to actually get to know the environment and the culture that he was in and offer him to deliver his comedy. And see, that's the thing. If you don't have something that's relatable, if you can't relate to the audience, I don't care how funny you believe you are, it's not going to go over well. So being able to actually know, know your audience and know what's relevant to them and finding a comedy in it is so critically important for you fact, to be able to actually have that winning presentation. Now, again, we've talked about all these different speaking styles, and in order for you, in fact, to be a master, in fact, you have to work on each and every one of them, but knowing how to actually interweave them. My youngest son, he talked about, we were going to this theme park, and he talked about a roller coaster. He was like, Dad, I really hate that they have, in fact, roller coasters have all those ups and downs and twists and turns. I said, how much fun would a roller coaster be if you just Stay at the same level the entire time. I mean, it's a kerosene. I mean, that, that, that gives you no sense of excitement or thrill at all. And our presentations need to be like a roller coaster. You need to be able to actually pick people up, to bring them down, to pick them back up again, to even motivate them, even going in loops, because that's what makes a more memorable presentation. So I want to ask you a question. How can you relate to your audience? And I'm going to give everybody a chance to think about that answer because I want each table to at least tell me one thing that you can do to relate to your audience from a comedic standpoint. And I will give you the audience that I want you to, to speak to. Millennials. <laughs> okay, now why don't everybody do that? Because some people have a certain perspective or perception of them. Right. But if, but if you're going... Oh, this is so important. The future, your future clients fall in that category. Yes. Why do you think that McDonald's start markets to kids? 
okay? We cannot discount those of a younger generation. Just because they're not in the driver's seat today don't mean that they're not coming. And if you're going to set yourself up for success in the future, you have to be able to identify with the ones that are coming behind you. Because they are going to be the ones that are going to be the, the, the business owners and like, the CEOs of tomorrow. So how do you communicate? How do you connect with them? How, how like, do you add comedy? Find out what's funny to them. I know a lot of us in here like, remember Richard Pryor. Okay? But my daughters, 22 and younger, they never heard it. I remember growing up watching Red Fox, Sanford or something. They have no idea who, who he is. So if I'm going to communicate to an audience of millennials, I need to listen and study, especially if I'm going to add comedy in my presentation, Kevin Hart. I need to find out what he's talking about because they are flocking in droves to see him. For you to sell Madison Square Garden, that means that you're actually doing something. You are communicating and connecting with people. So if you're going to be an effective speaker, you have to study your audience, who are you talking to, and then be able to have a relatable topic that they can identify with. So has everybody had a chance to think of a way that you can connect from a, com from a comedic standpoint to millennials? Anybody have any ideas? OK. All right, enough. Music. OK. Oh, okay, but how can that be done from a comedic stand? Um, some of the the There's a comedian that's on a Steve Harvey show called J. Anthony Brown. Yeah. Yeah. He does this thing called Murder the Hits. Yeah. Well, he takes a hit song and he rewords it. Yeah. And he makes it funny. And so even using music, but being able to switch it up, being able to change the lyrics, that can be another way for you to be able to connect to that group of people. Anybody else? Technology. Okay, okay. technology. Are you going to talk about the lack of your knowledge? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I think we have a couple hands up, so. Include means on slides. So yeah. those current means that you're seeing online, uh, people crack at it anyway, that same part you want to put it in your presentation. And of course, this comes from the technology guy. <laughs> and there are a lot of known means out there that they use day in and day out. And that's another way that you can add. Jeff, yeah. Snapchat. Yeah. Snapchat. OK. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I don't know if I don't know if most y'all know this, but I had a total hip replacement back in December. So I ain't dropping nothing. I can drop it, I just can't pick it back up. Text the word for something. Some of that stuff means different things. Believe me, I found out the hard way. I'm Carlos to Carlos, right? I've been speaking in high schools a lot of times, and I'll make a point. I'll ask that audience, what's the word of today? Oh, what's the word of today? 
They'll yeah, give me a word and I'll use it wrong. Yeah. Like my house was on 38 because I'm like, I'm freaking out of control. They all crack <laughs> what they're saying. Using what they're saying. Yeah. So that means that in order for you to do that, in order for you to be able to commit, they give you to know what they're saying. And it's good to have resources. It's good to have people that you can go to, and not just for millennials, but even all age groups. Style. I mean, they don't know nothing about style. You know, back in the day, style. Style. Oh, yeah. We used to do this, but y'all young folks nowadays, I don't know what y'all got going on. <laughs> well, yeah, that's but some of them may not like teaching. <laughs> some of them may not take too kindly, you know. That's all I'm saying. Oh, okay. How about, um, I have two things. Either video games that my kids are 20 and, and 22. So okay. video games that they play or um, talking about YouTube channels that they follow and, and connecting them that way. Okay. Okay. So understanding what they're doing and what's important to them can really help you in how to actually get over to them. Even if you haven't played the video game, but if you know the name of it, if you can ask somebody you know, for some help in playing Call of Duty, they'll be like, wait a minute, what do you, how, how do you even know that? But being able to relate to them is so critically important. And so I do want to just close with this, that in order for you to add comment to your presentation, you have to be able to have something that the kids or that the that your audience can understand. And you have to practice. I just I can't emphasize that enough. You have to practice and you have to be willing to take risks. You know, Steve Harvey, he, he talked about how in his comedy set, like what he would do was he would go out and he would tell jokes. And if the joke got a light laugh, he would break that as a one. If you got a marginal laugh, well, that'd be a two. If you got a good laugh, that'd be a three. If you got a better laugh, that was a four. And if, and if everybody was falling on the floor, that was a five. So what he did was he actually kept a track of that in his head. And so as he went out, he would just get rid of all of the ones, all of the jokes that didn't really have that big of an impact. And as a speaker, sharing with what you may consider to be funny, but if the audience don't get it, Maybe you need to take that out. Maybe you need to pull that and put that to the side. But if you do have something that resonates with your audience, make that a part of your story, right? Make that a part of what you have in your presentation because that's what's going to help make you a better speaker, a better communicator. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people try to do stuff, try to be funny, try to share information they hadn't practiced, they hadn't put in the work, they hadn't worked on their timing, they don't really know the audience, and then it comes across as an awkward moment. And that's one thing that you really don't want to have. So if you're going to be an effective speaker, if you're going to add communication, if you're going to add comedy to your communication, you have to practice. You can listen to comedy, you can learn from comedy, but then once you've done that, you can also unleash comedy on your audience because that's what's going to help them remember you long after everybody else is gone. Anybody can stand up here and read the slides. Anybody can, can stand behind and point and read a piece of paper. But to be able to connect with your audience, for them to like you, for them to appreciate the fact that you put in the work, to know who they are and what's important to them, that makes all the difference in the world as to whether or not they remember you. And not only that, then they call you back. That's really what you want. In fact, like Dr. West said, he's not speaking for standing ovation, he's speaking for standing invitations. And if you are good enough at what you do, they'll call you back. They'll look for you. Somebody else will say, hey, I need you to come and speak at my group. And then, even with that, they want you to actually, they have this thing they call a hit record. In fact, when you tell a story, it may be your story. In my case, of me stuttering and tell it the same way every time because when somebody hears it, they're like, wait a minute, this group of people over here need to hear just what you say. Don't change it, don't mix it up, don't switch it. Say the same thing. I went to a Brian Bernard concert. And he spent half the time holding the mic out like this. I said, we came to hear you sing. <laughs> we came to hear you. We didn't come here for, 
<laughs> like people stand on the edge of the stage and talk. No, no, no. We paid to hear you sing. And so sharing your presentation, sharing your voice, sharing your story over and over again, it helps build your confidence, but it also helps you to be seen as an expert in the area. And comedy can definitely help you in that respect. With that being said, this is Sakoni Prince of SakoniPrince.com, where we make motivation personal by introducing you to yourself. Yeah. Yeah.